Janet Andropia. Welcome to Average Physics Academy. In this video, we are going to define the average speed of a moving object, write the expression of the average velocity vector, compare the magnitude of the average velocity vector to the value of the average speed, determine the instantaneous velocity vector, write the characteristics of the instantaneous velocity vector, solve an exercise about the velocity vector. The average speed of a moving object is calculated by dividing the distance it travels by the time taking. So between A and B, the average speed is given by the actual distance between A and B over the time interval delta T. Watch this video. Player 21 travels the distance between A and B in a time interval equals delta T1. Whereas player 30 travels the same distance in a longer time which is equal to delta t2 so the average speed of player 21 is greater than that of player 30 the si unit of the speed is meters per second and the meter per second is equal to 3.6 kilometers per hour let's move to the average velocity vector Consider a particle moving on a curved path. We draw the position vector of the particle at an instant t1. We draw the position vector at an instant t2. And then we draw the displacement vector between these two instants. Remember that the displacement vector is equal to the final position vector minus the initial position vector. The average velocity vector can be calculated by dividing the displacement vector by the time taken. Delta t is equal to the final instant minus the initial instant. Now, consider this equation. Delta T is positive. Therefore, the average velocity vector and the displacement vector point in the same direction. Consider three particles M, N, and Q moving from point A to point B on three different paths. Observe the simulation. As you see, the three particles take the same time to travel from point A to point B. Since they have the same displacement vector, according to the above formula, V average is given by delta R over delta T. The three particles have the same displacement vector and the same time interval delta T, then they have the same average velocity vector. So we can conclude that the average velocity vector of a particle moving from point A to point B in a time delta t would be the same whatever the shape of the path followed by the particle between these two points. Let's move to the magnitude of the average velocity vector. The average velocity vector is equal to the displacement vector divided by the time taken. Then its magnitude is equal to the magnitude of the displacement vector divided by the time taken. Now consider a particle moving on a curved path. The particle reaches point A at an instant t1 and reaches point B at an instant t2. We draw the displacement vector delta r between t1 and t2. Now let me remind you with the average speed. The average speed between A and B is equal to the travel distance between A and B over the time taken. Now observe the figure. The travel distance between A and B is equal to the arc AB. But in the figure, the actual travel distance AB is different from the magnitude of the displacement vector. But what does this mean? Look at the last two equations. The magnitude of the displacement vector is different from the actual the travel distance between A and B. Therefore, for motion on a curved path, the magnitude of the average velocity vector is different from the average speed. But is this result always valid for all types of motion? Let's see in the next slide. We have seen in the previous slide that the magnitude of the average velocity is not equal to the average speed for a curvilinear motion. Is this result valid for a rectilinear motion in one direction? Observe this animation. As you see, 
the plane moves from point A to point B on a straight path. So, the displacement vector between A and B is denoted by delta R. In this case, the magnitude of the displacement vector is equal to the travel distance D. So, compare the above two formulas. Since the magnitude of the displacement vector is equal to the actual distance and delta T is the same on both formulas, so the magnitude of the average velocity is equal to the average speed in a rectilinear motion in one direction. Focus, please. This is important. Let's move to the instantaneous velocity vector. The instantaneous velocity vector is the velocity at a certain instant. Let me remind you now with the average velocity vector. In order to calculate the average velocity vector between two points, we divide the displacement vector by the time taken to get between these two points. Now look at the figure. A particle moves on a curved path from point A to point B. We draw the displacement vector between these two points. As the time interval delta t becomes shorter, the displacement vector also becomes shorter. When delta t becomes sufficiently small, the displacement vector becomes tangential to the trajectory. Then, as delta t goes to zero, the average velocity vector becomes tangential to the trajectory. Therefore, the instantaneous velocity vector is the limit of the average velocity vector as delta t goes to zero. Replace the average velocity vector by delta r over delta t. This expression mathematically represents the time derivative of the position vector. Therefore, the instantaneous velocity vector or simply the velocity, is equal to the time derivative of the position vector. Now, an important remark, the velocity vector is tangent to the trajectory at any instant. As we have seen in the previous slide, the instantaneous velocity vector, or simply the velocity vector, is tangential to the trajectory, and it is the time derivative of the position vector. Now, let's differentiate the position vector with respect to time to determine the expression of the velocity. V equals R prime, then V equals X prime I plus Y prime J, or V equals VXI plus VYJ, where VX is the X component of the velocity and VY is the Y component of the velocity. Now, let's observe the animation again. Now, this animation shows VX and VY at each instant. Let's move to the characteristics of the instantaneous velocity vector at a point M. Consider a particle moving on a curved path. In this figure, we show the particle in three positions, M1, M2, and M3. Now, generally, if the particle is at a position M, then the origin of its velocity vector is the point M itself. The line of action is the tangent to the trajectory at M, and the direction of the velocity vector in any position is in the direction of the motion. The magnitude of the instantaneous velocity vector, or simply the velocity vector, is the instantaneous speed at this point. Remember that the velocity vector is equal to Vxi plus Vyj. Therefore, its magnitude is equal to the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. Now, what is the SI unit of the speed? It is the meters per second. I want to remind you that the speedometer of a car measures only the instantaneous speed. The position vector of a moving particle m in xy plane is given by 2t squared i plus t minus 4j in si. This animation shows the trajectory of m during the first six seconds. Part 1. Determine the average velocity vector and its magnitude between time 1 second and time 3 seconds. The average velocity vector is given by this formula. V average is equal delta R over delta T, where delta R is given by R of 3 minus R of 1. 
to get the value of r of 3 just replace t equal to 3 seconds in the expression of r and to get the value of r of 1 also replace t equal 1 in the expression of r therefore r of 3 is equal to 18i minus j and r of 1 is equal to 2i minus 3j delta t is equal to 3 minus 1 therefore the average velocity is given by or is equal to 8i plus j in meters per second now the magnitude of the average velocity is given by to the square root of vx squared plus vy squared where vx is equal to 8 and vy is equal to 1 thus the magnitude of the average velocity is equal to 8.1 meters per second let's move to part 2 Determine the instantaneous velocity vector and the speed at time 2 seconds. Before determining the instantaneous velocity vector, let me remind you with two simple rules of the derivative. The first one. If x equals a and a is constant, then x prime equals 0. The second one. If x equals a times t to the power n, then x prime or dx by dt equals n a times t to the power n minus 1. Now, the velocity vector is the time derivative of the position vector, so let's differentiate the x component of the position vector with respect to time. 2t squared is similar to a t to the power n, therefore its derivative is 2 times 2t. Let's move to the y component of r. The derivative of t is 1 and the derivative of minus 4 is 0 because it is constant. Therefore, the velocity vector equals 4ti plus j, and of course, it is expressed in SI units. Now, we want the velocity at time 2 seconds. Just replace t by 2 seconds. This is going to be the velocity at time 2 seconds equals 8i plus j, and it is expressed in meters per second. But this is the velocity at time 2 seconds. And we want the speed at time 2 seconds. The speed equals the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared of the velocity. Therefore, the speed at time 2 seconds equals 8.1 meters per second. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and share.